What time's kickoff? Thank nice to meet you, buddy. Nice to meet you. You're looking well. Thank you. Good you looking, too. Chavi. Thank you. Sorry for my English. No problem. Sorry for my German. Uh, All I know is, ich bin die Weltmeister aus Großbritannien. Yes, of course. You are the best of the world. Yep, there, my boy. So, where's all the team? Where's everybody at? He's here. He's here. I hear Mikey right there. Yeah, and where's my team? Can we have a big hooray for Tom Schwartz's team? Hooray! Come on, boys and girls. You're more than welcome. Stage is all mine. Come on. Anybody? Nobody? What about you? Come on. Where's Bob Arum? Bob! Bob's always got something to say. Yeah. Bob Frank, get your ass up here. Come on. Come on, boys. Let's get the party started. Can we have a big round of applause for Frank Warren and Bob Arum? They made this possible. Come on. First of all, good, Bob, this is Tom. Nice to meet you, sir. There's a microphone. Frank, this is Tom. Tom, Frank. This is the takeover. Guys that Tyson Fury remind me of are Muhammad Ali and George Foreman. They were people persons first. They talked to the people, directly to the people, over the head of you writers. Can't believe that he's back. Can't believe that he's back. Fury's back at number one. Back at number one with Ring Magazine. It's been a while, only took me a year from get from nothing back to the top, which I'm very proud of. Very proud of. So, thank you very much for your question, Russell. I'm doing fine. Good, I'm doing good. fine. It's, a, it's great to be here. I was just thinking about Bob and I, the first time we did a promotion together was 1985, Don Curry and Colin Jones, 34 years ago. So that was uh, that was our first. We've had some we've had some great experiences working with Bob over the years, and this is for me is it don't get no better than this. To be working, in my opinion, the number he number one heavyweight in the world, who I think is going to be proved in the next few years to be the best heavyweight of his generation. It's great to do that and be working with Bob on top rank. Our training was very good, same my trainer. Sorry for my English. I hope all understand yeah. me here. Uh, our training was very good, and uh, we have hundreds of sparring partners, hundreds of hundreds, and <laughs> hundreds of sparring. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think thousand two hundred. That's what they need to emulate your hand speed. And you added for this um, team. I read in my notes that you added uh, Roberto Norris to your team for this. Yes, camp. yes, Roberto what, Norris. What has that addition been like? How has he helped you to prepare? Yes, uh, he um, make me harder, my body harder. He punched me when I sleep in my body every time, and uh, he make me very hard. And the technique, uh, um, let's say, uh, Rene and Roberto, we make the technique, my technique better. I learn boxing new. Yes. American style. Oh, more yes, American style. Yes, this is style. American style. I hope. I know we talked about yesterday drawing some inspiration from Andy Ruiz's performance over Anthony Joshua, but also you have to probably draw some inspiration too from when Max Schmeling beat Joe Lewis. Uh, have you looked at some of those tapes to kind of get you ready for some of these German heavyweights that have caused upsets in boxing? Have you drawn any inspiration from them? Because obviously Tyson is the favorite on Saturday night. <laughs> Sorry, my German's not so good. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, he, Axel Schulz is here and Max Schmeling. I love this, uh, both guys. And uh, now comes I am, or I, uh, my English, sorry. But yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now comes your time, is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, it's my time, of course. He looks at what he can do on Saturday night against Tyson Fury. That's what he's looking at. All these Germans that fought so well, we know, and made, made, uh, caused upsets or near upsets, they happen to be German, but they're not Tom Schwartz, <laughs> right? Tom Schwartz is Tom Schwartz, and he knows what he can That's do. Right. And he's fair play, Bob, fair That's play, right. fair That's play. Right. It's easier, we can work on different things, but also physically, you know, without having to do much more, we're prepared for Tom Schwartz the same way we're prepared for Deontay Wilder. 
Um, but just having that extra time for his body to be able to recover from a 140 pound weight loss is, is showing. I know you study tape as well and you watch boxing. When you look at Tom Schwartz and his film, what do you see? Well, before, before I even look at Tom Schwartz, I know that the Germans are very well known for doing things correctly and doing things well, you know, so good fundamentals. Um, I know that he's added um, a new training team and I know Roberto, you know, very good coaches. So I'm sure there'll be elements of his game that he's added as well. So obviously we've kept a keen eye on him, but elements to his game that we'll be looking to exploit, I'm not going to talk about now, obviously. Tyson's a, a freak of nature, physically and mentally and emotionally, you know, he's, he's uh, I've never seen anything like it from anybody. Tyson? How you doing? You ready to talk? You want to take this? Pretty chill. It's been you're, pretty. You are pretty chill. Pretty quiet pretty and pretty. Um, Except your suit's not quiet. It never no. is, though, right? Can you tell us what you're wearing today? The suit. It's a little different than the one with the uh, lineal champions. What, what's on the suit for those who don't know? Yes, for those who don't know, this is the uh, the suit going back. I don't know a few hundred years of all the bare knuckle fighters from the past, just paying homage to all the legends from the past and. So it was fitting, you know, a bit loud and a bit like my personality in Las Vegas. Why not? Yeah, you probably have some family members then, considering you have yeah, I've what? Yeah, got a few family members on here. So. You know, uh, Frank and I have promoted half of the guys you have on your I went to school with one of them. <laughs> Tyson, uh, I asked uh, Frank what the buzz has been like uh, over in the UK fighting here, but you've been here uh, over a month now. What has the buzz been, the response to from the American people to you? What do you feel like the response has been to your, you know, getting ready to make your top rank, or top rank and Las Vegas debut here? I feel it's been very, um, the crowd have warmed to me and everyone's been very welcoming. American people are coming over to me. All different types of people from all over the world you meet in Vegas. And I'm surprised actually. People who don't speak English, people who probably don't even watch sports are coming over and asking for photographs and, and wanting to talk to me. So it's quite humbling to be honest. But it's, um, it's a very great experience to be here. You know, Las Vegas, MGM Grand, it's where all the big fights happen. It's uh, seeing your face up on all the uh, movie screens and all the posters. It's a great, great experience, but it was what I was born to do. And I believe the fight with Wilder only helped with my profile in the US. And here we are again, back on the big stage and only a few days away from the biggest fight of my life. I think part of that warm reception from people that maybe have never even seen you fight before is, is partially because you've been so open and honest in all of your interviews and all the media that you've done about mental health and what you've overcome uh, to that point to get here. And why was that so important for you to make that a point of emphasis in promoting a fight where oftentimes fighters just want to talk about the fight. They don't want to talk about anything else. They don't want to talk about the past. They just want to talk about the task at hand. But that's been something that's been very important and prevalent to you. Why? You know, I talk about mental health a lot because it's very important to me because only 18 months ago I was in a very, very dark place. Um, I just wanted to prove to people that there is a way back. You can come back from anything. Nothing is impossible. And if you'd have saw me that time ago, I was very heavy, very unwell. And, you know, I, I look to inspire people to get better and, and change their lives as I did mine. And I'm living proof that anyone can change and, and anyone can come back from anything because if I can do it, then you can do it. I'm nobody special, just a normal human being. I'm only human after all. Don't put the blame on me. Woo! I, thought it but <laughs> I hope it is inspirational and I will keep banging that drum. Bang, bang, bang. Well, to help people. Because what am I here for? Why am I in Las Vegas boxing? Why? Is it for money? Is it for fame? Is it to be a champion? I believe my calling card now is to help people who are str struggling around the world, the oppressed people, the down and out people who think there's no way back. I want to prove to them that they can come back and that there is help out there. All they've got to do is reach for it. And that's what I intend to do. It doesn't get more in inspirational than that. I mean, we're, we're up here, obviously, selling a fight that... Both of these guys got to take care of their business inside of the ring, but I think it's really important for guys that have a platform like you do to be able to share your cause and inspire people, not just in boxing, getting up in the 12th round against Deontay Wilder, but getting up from being down in your, in your life and from that dark place. I was down and out. I've got my family right here, and even those guys thought I was gone. There was no return for the Gypsy King. was no more. He was finished. But I dusted myself off and got back on the road and got back mentally well and me, Ben, and a full team, we, uh, we worked really hard for a long time to get to this position again. And to take a, a big fight with Wilder and then 
have that fight and have a good fight and be back again six months later in Las Vegas. It's a dream come true. I am living the dream. That's why I'm so happy all the time. I'm so positive because I'm living my dream, what I dreamed about from being this big. And I'm, I'm one of the only people that I know that can say, listen, I am living what I always wanted to do. There is nothing else I wanted to do from being a kid. I wanted to be heavyweight champion of the world and I achieved that in 2015. So now... Everything's a bonus, you know, I'm having fun every day and enjoying one day at a time and, and taking life as it comes. Just looking at me and Tom. I'm surrounded by good looking boys, I'm Thank <laughs> you.